Let's jump in. Hey guys, it's me. I know this is confusing because I'm talking but my mouth isn't moving on screen, but I just want to apologize for the stupid reflection in my glasses. I obviously don't know how to set up lights anymore, so you'll have to deal with it. Thanks. Today we're going to be looking at how to do this kind of transition. Ray gun on safety. My girl's so tasty. Tell it's your world. Okay, cool. Now that you've seen it and you're like, wow, that's... Your little little brains exploded. I know. We're gonna make those little brains really big. So let's jump into it. So the first step of this whole transition is getting two clips that will work well together with this kind of transition in mind. Two clips with a lot of movement in them. So this worked out really well because the guy is transitioning from falling down into the ramp and I'm falling down off of a chair. Uh, on a chair, in a chair, around a chair. There's chairs involved. Calm down. Stay calm! Wait, 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 wait. Stay wait, wait. Calm down! This transition just matched cut almost works perfectly. But we're gonna spice it up a little bit more so it looks a little bit more sexy. Oh! So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is isolate and remove our skater. So we'll go to the spot where we want him to go bye bye. It should be right about here. We'll make a cut. Now with this new clip, we're gonna hit our pen tool and we're just gonna draw roughly around our subject because we don't want him there anymore because he caused us a lot of pain. That was unnecessary for the new year and he can still win. Okay, so now we have our rough mask of our boy. You're like, oh my gosh, where did the rest of the image go? Well, that's how masks work. Welcome to Mask 101. So we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer and then go here and turn off our masks. And this would have been easier to do if we had just duplicated the layer first instead of doing all that, but I'm stupid, so here we go. So now that we have our duplicated layer under that, we're actually going to go back to our top layer and we're just gonna keyframe this mask to follow our subject until he exits frame. And the way we do that is go down to your masks, mask one, hit the stopwatch on all these, and just go frame by frame, adjusting the mask points. I've been working on the railroad all Adjusting the mask points. Long day. I've been working on the railroad frame by frame. Just to pass the time away. Okay, so now that we've masked around our subject all the way through, we are going to go ahead and go to mask and go to subtract. So this will give us a cutout of our mask. And if we turn off our bottom layer, Bruh. you'll see that there's now a nice skater shaped hole. So now that we have this masked out, we're just going to go over to our content aware fill, make sure our top layer with the mask is selected. We're going to go to object and the work area and we're gonna generate a fill layer. So this will do its little thingy thing and we can sit back, relax, maybe take a sip of the coffee. It's done. Oh, it's not. <laughs> now it's done. So if we play through, it's not, it's something, you know, it is really something. But what we're gonna do to make this even better is create a reference frame. So what this is gonna do is open up Photoshop. And so what we're gonna do in Photoshop is manually get rid of the skater and create almost like a clean plate for the fill aware generator content aware generator fill 3000 to come in and use as a good reference frame to fill the rest of the frame. So we get rid of this mess in the beginning. We'll go to our clone stamp tool and all we're gonna do is just fill in and erase. Can't you hear the whistle blowing? And the trick that I like to do is once I get a really, really rough, this is more rough than I usually have. That's what she said. I like to go in and use the patch tool. And this is great because you can select a huge area like that. Just move it over and it will automatically fill in. And it'll make it look a lot better than what we could do. Rise up so early in the morning. Great, so this is not perfect, but this is a good clean plate for the um, content aware fail 3000 to recognize. So we're just gonna exit out of here. We'll save, and then boom, as you can see, it shows up right here. And that is our new reference frame. So we're gonna get rid of this fill layer that just made, and we're gonna redo this process again. And as you can see with that reference frame, it's looking a lot better from what it was before. We're still getting a little glitching going on around this area, 
but all we have to do is just go back in and readjust our subtract mask and then run the generate fill again um, and that should fix everything up. Also you can work with the alpha expansion which is basically like feathering um, and I might mess around with that until we get a nice looking result. All right so now let's drop in our fall clip and that looks like this. As you can see, I've already added some zoom in and camera shake to that. All that is, is just adding some keyframes to zoom in on the image and then zoom out with some easy ease. And this was just manually moving the frame around frame by frame to get that handheld kind of wobble look. So we're going to go frame by frame. And right before that camera zoom happens, we're going to make a cut. And now we're going to rotoscope out our subject. So we'll simply just cut out our subject. You can hold down option to erase little bits of your rotoscope. And now we're just gonna go frame by frame, analyzing this and making sure that this outline sticks pretty well to our subject. We're gonna go to our rotor brush mat and we're gonna just adjust the feather a little bit. I usually like to have it around 10 for stuff with a little bit more motion blur. We're gonna help this smoothing with reduced chatter um, and we'll put that around 50. Here we go. So frame by frame, analyzing this, making adjustments where we need to. All right. And once this subject is cut out, it's looking something like this. We're going to go to the very last frame and we're going to hit that freeze button. This is very important to do um, because it's some magical after effects and mumbo jumbo that I don't really understand. Uh, but if you don't hit it, it could cause a little bit of issues and opacity, um, differences with a lot of different things like your life, your marriage, it could ruin your whole life. So let's just hit that freeze button. What we're going to do now is match the clip where homeboy skater boy disappears. We're going to move a UV UV on over our roto brush guys so that right when he disappears, it turns into him fall, fall, fall. And then right when that roto brush ends, we're going to bring in the actual clip. You can see it's getting, it's getting, it's, 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 it's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting there. And we're, we're happy. We're good. We're happy. We're healthy. We're good. No coronavirus around me. This is one healthy looking transition so far. We're going to add a little bit of spice to spice it up, add a little bit of flavor. So what we're going to do is kind of match up our two subjects a little bit better. We're going to go to the end of the rotor brush clip and we're going to hit all these stopwatches and then we're going to go to the beginning of the clip and we are going to match up um, this roto brushed guy to look a little bit more like he's in the same position of the skater uh, to help that transition between the two. And honestly, that looks pretty decent for a quick match cut. <laughs> So here's our flash asset. This is Frank, all right? He was like, let's just leave it like that call of the day. No, 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 no. We don't do that. We put in the work. Put in the work, put in the hours, and take what's ours. Scale this up a little bit. So go to our scale, and I'm thinking, yeah, something like that. Maybe even like a little bit of a rotation. Maybe more scaleage. Yes. Okay, so just with that little adjustment, oof, we're looking spicy. But we're gonna add a little bit more juicy juice. We're gonna add in these um, dirt and like lens dirt kind of reflection things. You'll see what I mean. It's a it's a good time. Oh, and sorry, the shockwave layer is set to add. Um, as you can see, if we turn those layers on, it's giving it just that extra little bit of spicy spice. And those only last for three, three frames. Um, and again, those are linked below. And all I did was just change the blending mode to these to screen, position them, bada bing, bada boom. There's your transition. We freaking did it, guys. We, we, we did the do and the do did us. And don't you ever do not think that do won't do you because it didn't do us, but, but do, do it, it because, because you, you did, did it anyway. anyway. And that's the name of the game. <laughs> It looks a little bit harder than it is. That's what she said. <laughs> but once you get a hang of that content aware fill, uh, life is magical. Life can be easy and your stepdad won't beat you anymore. So. Wow. you, Mark. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope that you have a great, fantastic rest of your day or night or poop if you're watching this on the toilet. Um, 